Hello, my name is Bob Kilman. I'm the Director of Wealth Management at OJM Group. And today we're going to be discussing the topic of risk in your portfolio, the importance of knowing your risk score. We find this to be one of the very uh, basic and most important concepts when we're talking with prospective and current clients about their portfolios. Understanding your personal tolerance for risk when it comes to investing in the markets, as well as what the risk of your current portfolio is. Do those two line up? And if not, um, how do we rectify that disconnect? We're going to drill down today on this topic and show you some of the tools that we use to identify the risk of your portfolio as well as your personal tolerance. Before we get started, we've got some legal disclaimers. I'd like to also note, if you find this information helpful today, we'd encourage you to check out one of our many books that we've written here at OJM. We've written over 10 books for doctors as well as fortune building for business owners and entrepreneurs. At the end of this presentation, there'll be a code that you may download an ebook or order a hard copy. We'll discuss more at the end of the presentation. So let's get right into it. The, the first thing I'd like to talk about is risk questionnaires. Um, likely, you've filled one of these out at some point with a financial advisor who has used a subjective risk questionnaire based on theory, psychological theory, but not necessarily quantitative math. Essentially, our view is these types of questionnaires typically miss the mark. So our goal when, when, when talking with, with you is to really drill in on your personal risk. And we do this with award-winning Nobel Prize math. So subjectivity has perpetuated stereotypes in the past. If you're young, you must be chasing aggressive growth. If you are retirement age, you must be extremely risk averse. The problem with subjective risk questionnaires is they typically miss the mark. So what we like to do is we're going to use math to pinpoint your exact risk tolerance. Using, as I mentioned, this Nobel Prize winning framework, we're able to quantify your risk tolerance into a simple risk number, 1 to 99, 1 being the most conservative, 99 being the most aggressive. This is based on actual dollars that you have today to assess how much you're willing to risk or lose in exchange for an opportunity at a specific gain. So these results in a quantified and objective outcome which you're going to be in charge of are really going to allow us to drill down to your specific comfort zone. So when we think about the steps it takes to get to your level of comfort, it's really that sleep number is the way we talk about it, is that the number that you're comfortable with on the downside of risk. How much risk can you take in your portfolio in the next six months? One of the things that I really like about this tool is sometimes we get caught up in percentages, thinking I'm comfortable with a 14% gain in the market or I'm comfortable maybe losing 8%. But many times it takes thinking about it in terms of real dollars to help really think about your level of comfort with risk, thinking if I have a million dollar portfolio, am I comfortable um, losing 80000 um, am I comfortable with that range in the next six months? Is that is that something that I, I would be comfortable with from the upside of maybe a hundred or one hundred and forty thousand, depending on your range? So those are some of the things we'll do to really drill down and capture that goal, and and then we want to match your investments to your individualized risk number. So again, as I say, uh, one to ninety nine is our scale. We'll take you through a series of questions, typically about three to five minutes. And we make that available on your desktop or mobile device. So we're going to fully analyze your personal risk tolerance. And then what we're really going to spend a lot of time on is your portfolio. So where you are today, what we have found is four out of five investors have more risk than they know. And it's very typical that you'll look at a portfolio and your risk score would come back lower 
than the portfolio's risk. And this example here, you're looking at someone whose personal risk score up in the top left-hand corner is far lower than what the portfolio risk is of 86. So that's where we want to spend a lot of time optimizing and looking at that. What I'd like to do is show you an actual sample here of this tool and how we utilize it. So for this example, we have Mr. and Mrs. Jones. We have sent them the questionnaire um, and they filled out a series of questions and their risk score came back to be a 70. Now, one of the, the common things we will hear when we're talking with prospective clients or clients in general is I feel like my, either my portfolio is not matching up with my level of risk when they first come to us, um, whether it be they're not happy with performance. Um, but a lot of times we talk about what are the expectations port, uh, for the portfolio? Is the portfolio even built to achieve what it is you want it to achieve? And so we'll get these uh, answers. They'll come in very detail here about what were, was being answered, how it was set, um, and we look at this particular client has a risk profile of 70. So a more moderately aggressive uh, individual feels they have enough time, uh, answer the questions in a way that they, they seemed a little bit more growth oriented. But what we found is their current portfolio, as we come down here, is a 54. So they've got a variety of different accounts, um, and each account will have a different risk score. So this particular joint account had a 43 risk score, and there may be some IRA accounts in here as well, where they each have their individual scores. But if we look at these in their totality, the entire bucket together, the risk score comes out to be 54. So what that tells us is the range, the 95% probability range for the next six months, what we would call two standard deviations. There's always going to be 5% of the market that um, we can't control. We can't diversify away, and a portfolio has a 5% potential to fall out of this range. But historically, looking at the market, this portfolio would fall in the range of possibly being down 11% in the next six months or up 16. That's the range for this particular client. And what we found is, the potential annual return for the portfolio is roughly 5.84, meaning based on all of these investments pulled together, it would be expected on historical data that this portfolio could achieve around a 5.8% return. And we also look at things like expenses and, and annual dividends. The other part about what we'll do is stress test a portfolio. So we can come in here and look and say, if we have a 2013-like bull market, we would expect a portfolio to go up 32% during that. That's what happened if, if you have a 78 portfolio. That's what the S&P did. This particular portfolio obviously is going to, to limit itself to the upside, and, and maybe that's what the client wants in, in relation to their, to their risk goals, um, but also would limit it to the downside, meaning if we have a 2008-like bear market, um, we're only going to be down about 20%. At, at, and, as opposed to the 38. And, and certainly if we look at a financial crisis, uh, like the period between October of 07 and March of 2009, we're going to be down significantly less with a portfolio built in this way. We also can model out uh, folks who are nearing retirement or thinking about retirement. Portfolio is built more with a bond allocation and the effect of rising interest rates. So in this particular example, this portfolio, because it's very light on bonds and some of the bonds that are in the portfolio are more of the floating rate type that would perform well with a interest rate move. You can see the impact is not is not a negative one for this particular portfolio. Many times, though, we look at interest rate moves in uh, clients' portfolios that are very much bond heavy, and we, and we do uh, look at that impact and that and that stress level on the portfolio. So I think this is an, a really nice tool that we use to really dig in on these things. And we can alter the market assumptions. So we're using just standard market assumptions from historical data, but we can customize scenarios. So if we have a particular uh, client who has very strong thoughts on what they think the market's going to do over any period of time, we can model all of that in as well as interest rates and, and show that in here. 
So, so once we've done that, we look at and say, well, Mr. and Mrs. Jones here has a risk tolerance of 70. They may be leaving some return on the table. If you remember here, their, their score is a 54, meaning the potential return that this portfolio can generate here is around 5.84 with down 1116. So what we'd like to do for this client is raise the potential return, get them closer to a 63, not quite 70, because we, we you know, talk through it with, with our clients and make sure that these answers really are where they were. This particular client kind of backed off <clears throat> some of the answers and was giving us a little bit more context to some of the, the answers to the questions. And so we thought 63 made a lot of sense. And these again are just sample positions, but instead of being down 11, we're, we're only down 13. So again, we're not taking on a ton more risk, but we're really optimizing much more on the upside. Instead of 5.8, we really can get a lot closer to an 8.3 potential return. Meaning when we come in and stress test, we're able to increase some of the upside here for clients during bull markets and also keep the downside during bear and financial crisis in that manageable zone. And certainly this assumes that there would be no changes to a portfolio on the downside. Certainly if we were in these types of environments, you know, the job of a financial advisor is to continually communicate with their clients about their risk tolerance and, and have things changed. And maybe there may be slight adjustments based on you know, what's happening in a given environment, very much like 2008, 2009. And again, this particular portfolio is, is built to do well in what we think over the next couple of years is going to be a rising interest rate environment. So it's a really nice tool. Uh, we do a risk reward heat map where you can actually come into each position. This particular international position obviously has a lot of reward um, and also a lot of risk. Whereas this particular bond fund, you can see the range historically for this position has stayed sort of range bound. And, and so we can do that with all of your current positions as well as, as, well as um, you know, prospective uh, investment vehicles that you may be looking at. So again, this is a really great tool that we like to use with all of our clients to illustrate exactly how we look at risk. I think it's a more dynamic way to look at it. Again, illustrating here that risk reward heat map. I think that's an important part because many times we'll, we'll, we'll talk to clients who have a concentrated position. Maybe they have one particular stock, maybe it's Apple um, or Facebook or something that has a little bit more risk reward to the profile. And sometimes those numbers can skew the overall in number. So we really wanna look at every position and every type of account that someone has. And, and as I mentioned before, that stress test to us is a very, very important component to looking at um, uh, what your true risk is. Because when you really put it into the context of a crash or a, a large correction, it'll help you feel comfortable in your long-term strategy, which at the end of the day is, is what we want to do. And again, it's all about optimizing. So th what this helps us do here at OJM is set the expectations for performance, that the client is comfortable with the potential return of a portfolio, but also comfortable with the potential downside. Uh, certainly there's outliers on both sides, but uh, it'll allow us to easily look at expense ratios and dividends. And it's a really nice tool for, for reviewing a, a portfolio. So as I mentioned at the onset of the talk, we've got several books, um, all of which are available here at the end. We'll talk about how you can get access to some of these books. Um, I'd like to talk a little bit about our firm and how we work with clients, who we are and what we do. Today, I covered one specific topic in the area of wealth management, which is how we build portfolios, how we talk about risk and um, set the expectations uh, for a portfolio. But, but we have a number of OGM experts in a number of areas in asset protection, tax, corporate structure, benefit and retirement planning, as well as insurance. We have a multidisciplinary team that includes attorneys, CPAs, CFPs, MBAs, investment and insurance professionals. Look for more of our videos where you hear from other members of our team who have expertise in these areas and more. Again, OJM specializes in working with uh, clients, 
thousand plus clients in 48 states. Um, as I mentioned, we're multidisciplinary with these three divisions we work from, and we can help clients both on the practice and business level or your personal planning. Next steps to get a free copy of some of our books, Fortune Building for Business Owners, you can reference the code below, our promotional code of WEB0516 at checkout. We would love to have a free consultation to run you through this risk analysis tool. You can contact me at the number below, also an email if you want to know, learn a little bit more about your personal situation, talk to us about your personal situation, and learn more about our risk profiling tool and your portfolio. We'd be happy to help. Enjoy the free copies of our books, and we hope to have the opportunity to speak with you. Thanks for watching.